Welcome back. Welcome to everyone here. Thank you so much for staying tuned. We have a fantastic session. This is our last session of today. Today we have been looking at um, so many different aspects. Today we have been focusing on innovation and tomorrow is all about sustainability. This morning we heard from Sharon from Tetra Pak who told us about connected packaging using a QR code on cartons of water that was given out at a marathon event. Then we went ahead and we heard about NFC and we heard from Tony and we heard from Neil who talked to us from Avery Dennison and from Atma.io. We then just had a fantastic session understanding about flexible packaging and EPAC packaging with uh, ScanTrust which actually has integrated QR codes into that packaging as a given. Um, which was really, really interesting to find out about. Now we're talking about the rise in connected packaging. We want to hear all about those things that we've heard about, but from three very interesting specialists in the space. And I'd like to welcome to our virtual stage, Sukhdev um, Singh Sani, who is our Global Chief Packaging Manager at Colgate Palmolive. I'd also like to welcome to our virtual stage, Shane, Shane Tanzi, who is Senior Business Manager at Fujifilm Integrated Inkjet Solutions. And a big hello and welcome also to Lucas Silva, who is joining us from SIG. He is Digital Transformation Sales Solutions Specialist at South Africa SIG. So big welcome to all three of you. Thank you very much for joining. I see Shukdev and Shane, you're coordinated in colour as well. So that was very, very nice and, and, and very well planned. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lucas, we're, let, we're yet to see. Are you? Oh, you're not coordinated, but never mind. Hello, hello. Oh, good morning, good. good morning, good afternoon. Yes, indeed. Good afternoon for us. And I think for all three of you, it's quite an early start. So thank you so much for joining us so early in the morning. Um, before we get kicked off, um, as I like to do, I really like just to hear an interesting fact from our panellists so that we can get to know you uh, a little bit more. So I'll start with you, Lucas. Uh, you're, you're smiling, so you're very ready, I can tell. Please tell us your interesting fact that not many people know about you. Uh, yeah, perfect. So first, pleasure, pleasure to, to everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. It's very nice to share a little bit what we have been doing with technology to you all. Uh, me, I'm Lucas. Uh, I work in with technology since I started my career. And a fun fact to share with you all, it's my, my hobby. When I'm not working with technology, I'm a, an old-fashioned guy also. So I really like to work with, uh, as a locksmith, so part of the furniture of my house, I built my, myself with uh, mechanical manufacturing. So uh, I'll see their tables, small chairs. So all of these I really like to, to do by myself. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, wow, well, I think you need to come and sort my house out. Brilliant. Thank you, Lucas. Great, great to meet you. Great fact. Shane, I'm moving to you. Tell us your interesting fact. Hi, Jenny. Uh, thank you for the invite. Uh, so this was a tough question, uh, but um, I was the last person in my family lineage, you know, direct and extended that could carry on our family name. Right. So with that being said, my wife and I are expecting Congrats. in the next few weeks. And wow. uh, coincidentally, this is not on, a, on purpose, but it will be a boy three of three. So I'll have ah! three boys and I've done my job to my family. <laughs> well, well done. Well done. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fantastic. I'm glad you uh, thought, thought about that fact, but it's a good one. It's a good one. Thanks. Sukhdev, over to you. Yes, thank you. Uh, it was uh, something uh, related to my um, beverage, which I usually like, which is uh, a chai or tea. And uh, yeah, so basically, I like to have uh, a new cup of tea wherever I visit a new place. I would like to explore something local. And uh, interestingly, like uh, I, I come from India and uh, there are various spices being added to it. So, yeah, I think uh, I have almost, I, I lost the count of it, but the last was almost like, I think uh, there's almost like 110 or 120 different types of chai or tea, which I have tasted so far. Uh, I have lost the count, as I mentioned, but yeah, I think um, there is a lot to explore, actually. And uh, that's what I, I am on a learning journey. And um, yeah, I keep uh, learning something about uh, 
the chai uh, every time I am in a new place. Fantastic. So some people collect spoons, some people collect stamps from different places, but you collect tastes of tea. So that's the first time I've heard that, but fantastic. Really great. Well, thank you. We know a little bit about you guys. Don't worry. These were the hardest questions. I think the next one should be a little bit easier for you. Um, as we've heard today, and also as Appetite's um, questionnaire showed to us, um, we do a survey every year, February, we saw some fantastic stats that really kind of showed what's happening in the market, the focus on digital and the focus on connected packaging. So we know that this is becoming an increasingly um, part of the marketing mix. Um, you know, I'll, I'll go to you, Lucas. Why, why do you think, um, you know, connected packaging is something that um, is, is growing so much at the moment? It's a, it's a very good question, Jeannie. I think, I think that we should think about four main possibilities to answer this question. Yeah? I think the first one is us, the consumers, we take the decision of select, of buy a product in front of the product on the supermarket or, or wherever we are. So differentiate the product is the best manner to influence the customer in the decision of the, the, the buying process. Yeah. So when I'm in front of the product, if it's all the same, how it will catch my attention. Mm -hmm. So with a digital interaction, with a different possibility of interaction, it's a possibility to engage customers and, and make them take the decision for your product. I also, every time I am discussing this kind of technology with our customers, I, am, I, I always mention the situation in which the packaging is a direct channel of communication, yeah? So normally, companies to achieve the customer, they need to do campaigns on, on internet, on television, on, on, on other omni-channel platforms. And uh, they have the, the main platform to interact with the customer. They have the platform that are on the table of the customer. So why not? Why not use it as the main channel of communication? Uh, we can use also the packaging to add value to the product and to create an identity uh, with the, the things that the customer really believes and what you do, what really fits to their lives. So I would highlight these four main aspects. So yeah, some great stuff there around differentiation. Shane, what, what are you seeing? What are you thinking? Why, why do you see this being much more present at the moment in conversations and in marketing channels? Uh, I think first off, I agree 100% with everything Lucas just said. I think my addition to that would be um, specifically around that means of direct communication and how e-commerce has just blown up over the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. So there's this real opportunity for brands um, to personalize their packaging and it's going inside people's homes and it, and it stays in front of them for quite a while. Uh, so there's a great opportunity there, and I and I'm certainly starting to see brands, um, you know, take hold of that opportunity and and um, implement more of that con connected packaging. So it's an exciting time, I think. Definitely, Sukdev, have you anything to add? From your perspective there? Yeah, I think uh, some of the points already being covered, uh, but then I think I would say it's a sign of a progression for the society. Mm -hmm. Uh, where uh, what I can comprehend is that I think consumers want to know more about the impact uh, of their purchase decisions, uh, especially now uh, with sustainability, mm -hmm. uh, also health and well-being of uh, their family, uh, their friends, and exactly how their uh, purchase will impact the earth and what technology or what material is uh, kind of uh, relevant uh, with respect to uh, our sustainability program. So I think they, they want to know more, they want to kind of be uh, connected. And that's where I think uh, this is the entire, uh, I would say uh, thought process, which, which people are uh, getting associated with. Yeah, definitely. And I think what you're saying there is, is, is really highlighting another trend, right? So connected packaging might be a trend, but also the trend for consumers to understand the impact of the packaging that they're about to purchase or the product that they're about to purchase, but also health. And I think maybe health was probably uh, pushed a little bit by COVID. So being able to understand the ingredients, the, 
the, the, the traceability, the source, where did this uh, it come from? And I think that's, you know, something that's really changed in the last two years as well. So again, it's about um, being able to offer the ability to the consumer to be able to stand, understand more about the product. Um, so yeah, I think all of that makes, makes, makes perfect sense. You guys are all in different regions, uh, two in the States, but different areas. And Lucas, um, you're, in, you're in Brazil. Um, Sukhdev, what, what do you feel in terms of where you are uh, versus the rest of the world versus Europe? Are, are you more ahead or behind? Tell me. I would say it's a big bag so far. Uh, in fact, uh, talking to some of my colleagues and also referring to some of the studies which people have done recently, now that uh, corrected packaging uh, is very popular nowadays, I would say so. Uh, it's a big bag. I think uh, there are, say, uh, consumers who are very well aware of uh, what uh, are the opportunities or options which are available to them uh, to learn more. Uh, and just to start with, I think uh, people do understand what is a normal barcode and a QR barcode. They can at least distinguish and they can talk about it. Uh, then I think people do understand that there is some kind of technology which works very well, like uh, the, the tags or RFID and NFCs. They have heard about it, but they don't know exactly how does it work. Mm -hmm. So I would say there are like various phases of uh, understanding with respect to technology. And uh, with respect to regions, I would say uh, in Europe, and Europe is of course very, very vast. And of course, uh, if I also add up uh, UK to that, so Europe and UK together, I think uh, there are say, some countries where the understanding is slightly mature. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I cannot say that for the entire uh, region of Europe. And uh, for, the, for the, uh, the North America as well, I think there are a few states at the East Coast and West Coast where certainly there are consumers who are very well aware of what's happening with the packaging as well as with the products and they, they can connect with this technology better. Jane, you, you're almost in the same region. Uh, you're certainly in the same country. H how do you feel around uh, the uptake and the differences geographically? Yeah, so I, um, you know, I've been fortunate to, to also travel around Europe, but most of that has been between hotel and, uh, you know, meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I texted some of my Fujifilm colleagues in Europe, asking them about connected packaging and the small uh, poll that I took uh, made me feel that we, we might be a little further ahead in the US in terms of connected packaging on the shelves. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a bit biased or skewed because when I'm walking through stores or I look at packaging that comes to our, my house, I'm looking for that, yeah. right? To see the engagement. Um, and, you know, I've certainly been seeing that uh, there's a fair amount of Amazon that ships to our, our house, you know, <laughs> especially over the past couple of years. And, and there's been the, you know, promotional content um, engagement through QR codes and such. So uh, I'm going to answer this with the U.S. as a head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Shane. I think you're right as well in terms of like big brands starting to embrace. That means, you know, Amazon, for example, putting it on their packaging. You know, I personally have a stream of Amazon deliveries <laughs> every week. So it's a huge brand that's getting into to, to people's homes. Um, but also, you know, things like COVID and, and, and track and trace and your vaccination certificate. And if you are going back to traveling, as many of us are, you obviously need to have that. So I think there's, there's, a, there's a lot of big uh, brands kind of moving there. But what about Brazil, Lucas? What do you feel about Brazil? Yeah, I totally agree with the guys. I think uh, we need to first evaluate the company profile and the consumer profile, as Sakdev mentioned. So when we are talking about global brands and customers, consumers with a, a little higher purchasing power, brands that sell to consumers with a little higher purchasing power, I think that we are in the same level. We, we have... Uh, uh, increasingly having access to internet and to devices here in Brazil, we have in numbers that we, we, ne we never have had been before. So I think in terms of technology and, and connection, we are growing a lot. Uh, but the main challenge is still for the low cost, pro low cost products. Uh, that is the, the major part of the Brazilian populations are able to buy. So 
this is the real challenge and this is the brands that are, let's say, behind the most part of the global brands mm -hmm. and the, uh, the other regions as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. That makes sense. And also there's two things, isn't there? There's brands who are putting the QR codes on, but also the um, knowledge of consumers to scan. Um, so there's the kind of the two data points there. Uh, but I think it's certainly uh, a global situation where we're talking about the rise and, and, and obviously the much more uh, opportunities for consumers to get involved. And as Sharon said, she was one of our first panelists, um, she said, you know, when they handed out their cartons with the QR codes on it, uh, consumers then who picked up the juice after that didn't have QR codes on it actually looked at the packet, looked at the carton to see where the QR code is. So it becomes that snowball effect. Once you've seen the connected packaging uh, working, then the consumer is looking for, 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 for that QR code on the, on, on the other packagings. Let's talk about some case studies. Let's talk about some, some, some great examples. Shane. Have you got any uh, great case studies or examples where you really see connected packaging and digital bringing to life um, using this type of technology? Yeah, I, I do. Um, th this brings me back to the Amazon home delivery. Um, and this is more of just a personal example where um, we had a package, it was around Halloween last year uh, and um, on it had uh, a pumpkin with a QR code, right? Mm -hmm. And it said on the package, like draw a face. So, I, you know, I, I pulled my, my three-year-old with me and we start drawing on it. And then I could scan the QR code and it turned it into um, augmented reality, right? Where it, the, the pumpkin kind of popped out, it was 3D and then you could play around with it with, with my kids. So it was a, a good example of connected packaging. It was engaging. Um, I probably remember it more than my kid at this point, but um, you know, it was nice to see that kind of come to life, right? And hopefully, you know, there's more of that going forward. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely, and that kind of engagement, and also in the shareability of that. Um, we had some really fantastic filters where, where you could turn your your face into, you know, the AR filter, so it moves with you as you move and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then you could share that. So again, that's giving the brand the opportunity not just to give a one-to-one a -one, uh, experience to that consumer, but also then to share that with everybody else on their social, on their WhatsApp, whatever. Uh, great, great example. Thanks, Shay. Uh, Sukhdev, have you got an example for us that you could talk about a case study or example that you really like? Yeah, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, yeah, I think uh, there are many interesting case studies uh, which uh, I have been reading about and uh, getting to understand more. Uh, a lot of food companies, uh, Nestle and uh, I think General Mills, they have been doing a lot on, on this uh, particular aspect. Uh, but however, I think I would like to talk about uh, Clinique, uh, which is a very popular cosmetic brand. Uh, so they they designed a digitally enabled I think it was a, a glass jar I think uh, because I have not yet uh, seen the uh, the pack myself actually I want to uh, buy the pack but I think uh, what I uh, got to know and understand is I think uh, they invited the consumers uh, to work with the NFC based label uh, yeah. with, which get kind of uh, access to exclusive content and services and uh, and I think it, this is a recent I think. Uh, um, launch wherein uh, it is now getting uh, available in various markets uh, i would say i think uh, this is uh, very good for the consumers as i think uh, it provides a window for uh, a personalized skincare guide uh, it talks about their geographic locations and i think uh, it, it basically is also kind of a window for both the the brand as well as the consumers to engage and uh, i think uh, it will give a lot of opportunities for the brand as well uh, to kind of um, help the consumers uh, provide uh, some bespoke skincare examples or uh, solutions. And also I think uh, some of the recommendations on uh, makeups and uh, uh, the beauty care products. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great solution. So yeah, I've seen it using an NFC tag. It is a glass uh, jar as well. Um, and I think that's a great example of then kind of unlocking 
uh, secret information almost. So if you're if you're one of the consumers that's in the know, then you get the opportunity to you know experience new things, unlock special points, take part in in special things. And I think that's a really nice way uh, that they're putting that out there. Lucas, what's what's your 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 favourite or uh, case that you'd like to talk to us about? Yeah, I have some some cases, some nice cases that I had the opportunity to work during my career. I had the opportunity to work in the cosmetic industry, the food and beverage industry. But my favorite one, I have some pictures here. Maybe can I share my, yeah, sure my screen just to, to exemplify? Sure. Just one second. Here, here. Here we go. Yeah. This is my, my favorite one. It's from a, a diary producer here in Brazil. The name of the company is Langiru, is one of our customers. And yeah. the project were related to serialize each indiv individual pack. And through this serialized QR code, we share with the consumer the history of the product. So by scanning this code, we have the opportunity to access the history of the product. I invite you, if you have a cell phone close to you, uh, just this is a real QR code. You guys can can scan it and see what will show up on the screen. But here I already brought some uh, examples of what will show in the screen. And we have the full history of the product. But uh, to be able to have this full history for sure, you have an internal system helping the customer to manage the shop floor. So by managing the shop floor, we can integrate all the information, all the production and quality control information in only one platform. And through serialization, we share this information with, with the consumer. So uh, that's how we have been working. And uh, it's an interesting case because we also already measured some results of this customer consumer interaction campaign. And we have nice numbers, so an increase of sales that, that a 6% of sales increased during the period of the campaign. Uh, we also helped the customer to increase a bit the price index, so a, a really nice case. And here, how the, the screen shows when you scan the, the QR code. So we can check where is located the family who provides milk to this batch of product. We here, we can switch between the multiple families who contributed to, to the lot. Here is the house. So here we have more, more detailed information about who is the, the family, the, the date and time when the, the, the milk was collected, the volume collected, temperature, and a lot of uh, quality information about the product. And this project was uh, originated because here in Brazil, a few years, a few years, five years ago, we had a market crisis related to milk modification. So the quality of the, the milk from of some brands was a little bit in check. And this customer, it's very, very serious in terms of quality. And they, they, they say to us, I'm not involved in it. I totally disagree with this kind of behavior. And I need to, to share with my, my consumer that I am a different brand. So that's the way they, they find to do that. And we provided all the technology to, to uh, make possible everything that I shared was provided by, by SIG in a proprietary platform. So that's a really nice example of, of consumers having the opportunity to see more more about the product, understand, you know, about the product and kind of building that trust, I think, in terms of the ingredients and the, and the, and the source. I, you know, I think that's a really, I mean, even going down to where exactly and, and, and when the temperature I saw there as well on the, on, on the kind of stats, really, really interesting. Um, so there's kind of entertainment value, you, you, you've got the kind of loyalty card and you, you've got that kind of information, that additional information example. So I think some really good um, examples. Um, what do you think around um, the changes, um, Shane, I'll put this to you, about, about digital printing? Because there's a lot of changes in, in printing that I think allows um, serialization, unique codes uh, to kind of be a, a possible solution. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I think, you know, as far as 
uh, digital print supporting the packaging industry. I think, um, you know, 10 years in the inkjet world is a couple lifetimes in terms of advancements. Uh, so there's a lot of capability um, in the field today as far as enabling um, package level serialization. I think one of the biggest um, hurdles that Inkjet has had to overcome is the ability to uh, print on packaging at the quality that um, is expected by the brand, right? Because this is consumer facing, uh, but also be um, robust and reliable in terms of not being a bottleneck to the production line or holding back that equipment's um, OEE in terms of uptime. So Inkjet has come a long ways where it is today versus where it was five or 10 years ago. So there's a lot of capability out there today and, and it's a great time to be an inkjet technology supplier just because there's the demand for connected packaging. And inkjet in my mind is, is in a, a place today where it can really help enable that and make it a reality. Really kind of allows the there's this, so there's kind of two types of, of well three types perhaps of, of of packaging there so you can have packaging which is personalized which I think is what you talked about before and we probably all know about the coke example being able to put the name on there and, and, and use digital printing for that but also the ability to do digital uh, digital printing for serialized um QR codes and another have you got any examples of that for example for example yeah, so um, package level serialization, there's there's a lot of requests for that um, today. I think some examples are working with brands, even on just label elimination, where they have unique labels they have to apply in, to packaging. So Winkjet in that way is just a, a process step elimination. It's a way to uh, be a little bit more cost effective throughout their supply chain by enabling digital print versus Inventor purchasing and inventorying and applying labels. Uh, so there's some good projects out there that that uh, we've worked on as well as we've seen um, where there's that item level serialization. And I think that that opens up then um, other opportunities. So kind of going back to, to loyalty cards and being able to then identify different uh, batch numbers, uh, zones, which of course Lucas, then is what that information's around in terms of being able to know what you know which milk farmer did that come from well you need to know that from a from a serialized perspective so i think that's really nice in, in, in kind of opening up the opportunities um what do you think Dev, in terms of opportunities and, and new ways to push this forward what can you see coming down the line in terms of um, i would say the technology per se, it's evolving. And uh, I would say, yeah, I think both digital printing and serialization, uh, they have been around for like many years. A uh, couple of things which, uh, which have definitely benefited is the implementation costs have come down. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the quality of output has improved a lot. Uh, and I would say, I think uh, both the consumers and uh, the industries, uh, if I can recollect the, the, the pharma industry, the pharmaceutical industry has definitely benefited from a lot of serialization efforts. And uh, I think uh, it's, it's time that uh, the other uh, industries uh, also kind of um, uh, take up to that. Uh, I can take also an example of all the e-tailers or online giants. Uh, they are uh, incorporating a lot of this digital printing technology into their packaging. Now, that's the future. Uh, of course, uh, the more traditional uh, industries uh, or uh, I would say the organizations, they are slightly picking up this particular trend. Uh, but I, I do feel that I think uh, we need to get creative with the applications. Uh, it's, not, it's not like we just replace uh, segment A with this segment, the, the, uh, the traditional technologies with this particular new technology. It's not going to happen that way. We have to be... Uh, ready with uh, uh, new ways of thinking and also merge some of the existing uh, supply chain tools uh, with with the new technology now that's how i think uh, the progress is going to be done and i think uh, very soon we will see that uh, people are getting benefited with these two technologies 
Well, I think you raised a really good point there about kind of not just replacing uh, different things and really kind of thinking about how to make it better. You know, I see quite a lot of brands who um, are embracing connecting packaging, but actually the QR code does nothing other than take you to a website. Their website will, you know, how many times do we as consumers go to a product's website? Well, we don't, do we? So it's really about that activation and then having an experience that means something and obviously that's where appetite creative is, is is really good at trying to bring in something that makes sense is it an ar opportunity is it a quiz is it a game uh, a gamification where you can have some education is it video content based on sustainability is it recipes how to use all those types of things and i think that's a really really important point which is yes it's great that we've got the new technology for making sure that we're using it uh, in a way that then makes that experience a good one because what we want is the consumers to see that carton scan their QR code and then you know search for that QR code on the next product not scan the QR code and go oh, that was that was a, a waste of my time um, and, and I think that makes some really good sense um, Lucas I don't know if you've got anything to add in terms of serialization um, if not let me know <laughs> No, I think guys covered very well. We cannot affect performance. Uh, we cannot, we, we need to offer a stable solution to keep the quality of the QRs as Shane mentioned. So these yeah. are two very good advantages of the technology. Um, I would just add that I think that company is much more open to bring technology to their operation nowadays, at least uh, evaluating the Brazilian scenario. Yeah? Companies are starting to understand that they have two options or bring technology or they will lose market share. So mm. that's the two, the two ways and, and they can select one that is very clear which one will be. So this openness helps us to, to propose new, new solutions, new technologies and put more products on the market. Definitely. I mean, what do you, what do you see? What do you see in your market as, as one of the challenges? Um, you know, what do you see that brands are saying? Uh, to you as a challenge of, of activating connected packaging. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Sakdev mentioned that the cost of the solutions are decreasing with the passing of the months and, and years. And I totally agree. I think that it's in fact is decreasing. I had the opportunity to work with serialization in pharmaceutical industry a few years ago and the costs there and the costs nowadays, it's much different, but we, we still need to consider the cost of the printing yeah? because we have, a, mainly if you are talking about a serialization printing, an online printer, I need to have a solution online. So I have more one consumable to consider. So this is one of the main challenges uh, I see to add this cost to the product. And then in fact, this is the, the main point of our discussion today is invest time in any strategy to engage customers, to engage the consumers. Because if I just add a, a serialized QR code by ad and don't think about the campaign, don't think about the engagement, it will be only a cost. Yeah, it will be only a cost to add to the product. But if I in fact engage with consumers and I in fact add value to my product, it's not a cost anymore. It's an mm -hmm. aggregated value. So uh, that's the, the, ch the main challenges I see here and what the consumer, the, the, our customers, the industry have been uh, question us uh, in the major part of the discussions. So Deb, what are you seeing there in terms of that biggest challenge um, from, from brand to, a, well, you, you're obviously working as a brand, but what do you see the biggest challenge from your point of view um, for, for, you know, getting the brands that you work with uh, to activate? So I would say, I think uh, we need to understand uh, what really I think the marketeers are uh, thinking about. And uh, I think one basic challenge which I see uh, with them is how does it connect with their vision and goals? Mm -hmm. So is the technology or uh, the product solution, whichever we 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 offer to them, uh, is it connecting with their uh, uh, overall brand goals? Uh, is it helping them getting, uh, say, the influence over the consumers? Is it really turning into uh, numbers, sales? Uh, that, that, that 
creates a lot of, uh, I would say, attraction for them. And uh, I think this particular value addition aspect needs to be improved by the technology providers. And of course, uh, with by all of us, actually, the designers, the, the packaging uh, technologists, as well as the leaders, I think we need to kind of help uh, the branch understand the value addition this technology will bring uh, to them. Uh, and also, I think uh, we have to admit that we are in competition with uh, other content providers. So it's not that simple. Uh, we spoke about like consumers and uh, people getting interested in our technology or wanting to know more about it. But that's just one part of the assumption. Uh, they have limited time with whatever they want to spend. And uh, I think we are in competition with, say, uh, any of the entertainment platforms or anything which were social media platforms where they would like to be spending their time on. Now, if there is certainly a merit in understanding more about the product, the offering, or engaging with the brand, and it's very easy to use, people will definitely, I think, move ahead. And then I think they will use some of the connected packaging tools. Uh, I think that's that's something which we need to kind of overall understand and uh, probably make some, uh, I would say, steps to improve on those. Mm -hmm. So really kind of making sure that um, the objectives of the marketing or the, or the product managers are being aligned with the experience and the connected experience itself. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Again, not not just diving in uh, and slapping a social media or a website behind the QR, for for example. Shane, what what do you think um, in terms of challenges? Yeah, so I've got two in mind, um, but they're related. Um, the first one goes to something Lucas was saying. It is around cost, and the second one uh, is on education. And I'll bring those together right now. So. In at least my experience, uh, a lot of the purchase decisions as far as um, that investment in bringing in digital capability, a lot of that decision is more internally driven in terms of how can this optimize my process? How can I save money by implementing this technology? So when we look at cost um, in through the lens of, of digital investment, for me, it's it's a lot of consultation around um, what is that total cost of ownership, right? It's not just the cost of putting a QR code on package, but it's by having this capability, what are the other ways I can save money in my supply chain, in my operations by bringing that into place? Uh, what I've found is that, you know, with, with the ability to print on packaging, there's not an easy report somebody can just pull out of SAP to say, all right, how much money did I save mm -hmm. on that package? It's more than just that. It's a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. And once you have that digital capability, no matter what decision, you know, whatever driving reason for that investment, a collateral benefit will always be around that ability now to also offer batch or item level serialization. So I think one of the challenges there is is most, mostly around that total cost of ownership and, and really just understanding that. So a lot of our conversations with the brand owners um, that aren't used to digital technology in their factories is um, just more of like a con uh, consulted cell in terms of just showing them the capability as well as the benefits. Mm -hmm. And that kind of comes back, of course, to the education piece that you're saying, right? So it's, not just educating that this is available, but also educating that the cost of integrating it actually can way um, be outdone by the aggregated value, which is what I think um, Lucas was mentioning as well. You know, it's not a one for one, uh, just because you put the QR code on, you're going to sell 10 more. But actually, there's a lot more to that in terms of brand loyalty, repurchasing, um, as well as then the shareability and the option to be taking your brand or your consumers actually to take your brand uh, to, to other consumers. And I think that's a really good point as well. One of the questions we always get is, you know, what's the percentage sale, uh, increase that I'm going to get? Well, yes, you will increase your sales, but there's a lot of different ways 
um, you're, you're going to be able to do that. Lucas, did you want to jump in there? No, it's just uh, just to add one point that I totally agree with Shane when he mentions about the total cost of ownership. It's a recurring discussion here uh, as well. But I, I would add also the return of investment of the product, the project, yeah? Because mm -hmm. once we, we start to discuss it with the customer, we are matching what we, you proposed, Shane, and what Jenny is, is mentioning right now. So I need to evaluate the total cost of ownership and the, the money that we will generate and create a matrix of return of investment to our customers. And if it's positive, it's under their, their standards, yeah, we can move on with the project. But how to prove it? Because it's estimations, yeah? How, how we can uh, commit with the sales increase, for example, it will depend on a lot of different factors, yeah? But it's, uh, we, we need to deep dive into these evaluations to, to justify the project to, to, to the brand owners. And uh, when we, we are able to do it, we have been very successful in the market cases. Yeah, one one brief example, Jenny, it, um, is, you know, one one of the common requests we'll see is to print the ingredients on packaging, right? Whether it's um, because there's some sort of supply chain variability in what goes into the product, or because that manufacturing location supports many different countries with many different languages, right? So digital capability, digital provides the capability to help manage that skew proliferation of packaging, right? Mm -hmm where at the end of the year, a lot of that packaging it, uh, gets thrown away due to obsolescence, right? Um, so once you have the capability to do something like that, well, a collateral benefit is you also have the benefit of being able to do connected packaging and, and other things like that because you have the capability at that point, right? So there's, there's a lot of different reasons why digital can be a good investment. Um, and once you have that in place, again, there's a lot of collateral benefits to it. Definitely, kind of the off, offshoot of having to solve a different problem means that you've got the, the opportunity. And I think that kind of feeds into what we were talking about previously about legislation as well. If legislation means we've got to uh, carry more information, well, if digital is going to be the way forward to deliver that, well, there actually we've got the opportunity to do all of these other things as well, um, which I think makes perfect sense. Obviously, if you're engaging the consumer, don't just tell them what you have to tell them, tell them what you want to tell them as well, right? Um, I think it's quite interesting, you know, we've got the, th the three, the four of us here. Um, obviously, we've got the brand, uh, we've got the digital printing solution, we've got the packaging company, and then us Appetite, we're the um, kind of marketing, we're the fun part uh, to, 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 to make that experience and, and, and align those objectives that you're talking about. Um, so there. But who's... Whose responsibility is it? I mean, who's driving the conversation? Is it is it is it always the brand? Is it is it you know digital printing offering the solution and bringing that, or is it you know Lucas SIG packaging company's responsibility? Who's who's really responsible in this? That's a very very uh, I would say interesting question, and uh, I I would say I think we all are in it together. Uh, it's a collaboration uh, which uh, which needs to work very well for this common goal. Mm, I think we need to understand uh, the basic uh, pillars on which I think uh, we we have to kind of uh, succeed. Uh, one of them is I think uh, product information, the information which the consumer wants or even the retailers they would like to have on the packaging. Now that's one. Second is I think uh, as organizations, we would like to have our supply chain transparency, uh, whether or not I think uh, what's happening across our supply chain. And uh, one of the other important pillar is the engagement pillar, uh, which could be like uh, the gamification. Uh, it could be the promotional items or the news around different products and brands. Uh, sustainability is definitely one of the hot topics. So. There are like these three or four pillars, uh, which have to be kind of taken into account. Mm -hmm. Now, we all bring in various elements of, uh, I would say, um, either uh, technology, uh, the content part, the design part. And I think we are all in it together. 
uh, I would say that uh, this is not going to be a unique, uh, say, or one dimensional work. I, it's not going to be like one person only dominating everything. Like the marketing alone cannot do anything or even the, the companies which are offering the solutions, they cannot do anything. So I think the, the silo work will definitely not work. And uh, what we have seen, uh, interestingly, is in all our solutions, uh, we, we have to kind of rely heavily on each other to make it a success. And I think that's what is going to happen for this as well. And I think uh, we are seeing that happen uh, with especially a lot of our partners, they coming forward and uh, uh, talking to us, uh, offering their solutions, which are unique. We also are engaging uh, with a lot of agencies who are, who are experts uh, on this uh, technologies. And also they understand what's happening in the market, the trend um, the, and the, the influence of technology on, on the consumers. I think uh, they bring in a very, very valuable uh, asset to us. Shai, Lucas, are we all are we all responsible? Do you agree there? Is there anything you want to add or leave with the with the audience as we close up? I do agree. Um, I I think that um, you know the brand, it, you know the purchase decision lies with the brand, right? Whether they implement digital in house or they look to their suppliers. I think it's on the supplier to have the capability and it's on um, the packaging supplier. And then from the inkjet or digital perspective, it's, it's up to us to um, inform people that the capability does exist and that you can do it um, economically. Um, so I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's definitely a team effort. Um, the other thing I think that kind of holds back the implementation is um, around transparency, right? I think there's a lot of great examples of this type of implementation in the field today. However, the actual route of implementation is kept confidential, right? Because uh, at a lot of times it can, can, it can be perceived as um, a competitive advantage, right? To have that capability. And so there's not a lot of open case studies or white papers sharing the collaborative route that an inkjet supplier, a packaging converter, and a brand owner where they work together to actually implement something to make it happen. So there's a lack of transparency. I don't know if that'll change. I hope it does. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's um, a lot of work out there. It's just um, not uh, you know, openly talked about in the public yet. Lucas. Are you assuming some responsibility for the for the movement of connected packaging and, and what do you want to end and leave the audience with? Uh, I totally agree. I totally agree with you guys. I think it's a, it's a collaborative environment. Uh, we have technology providers, we have platform providers, we have the brand owners as the, the bridge to the consumers, everyone working together to, to propose to the market uh, a solution that will aggregate value. That's that's the goal. And something that I used to leave with the audience, let me think about it. I, I think that everyone needs to realize that in fact, the technology is, is here, it's yeah. ready, it's ready to be used. Uh, technology, it's not a limitation as it was six, seven years ago, as we spoke, it's something that it, it's viable. And uh, it's, as I mentioned before, we have two ways to choose or use technology, use connected packaging to generate value and differentiate our product or other companies will do and will be, will be, uh, will be back on the market, yeah? So that's, the, that's my main message. And strong, uh, strong, strong message, Lucas. Dif yeah, differentiate, uh, innovate or, or, or die, isn't it really? Or die, or die, yeah, that's it, that's it. And when we are talking about Everything that is happening, the, th the, th the changes that is happening inside of industries follow the same way, yeah? Because or if we use technology to produce better, to produce with higher quality, with lower costs, and, and consequently with more efficiency, or we'll not be competitive, or we differentiate the product on the market, or it's we will not have any difference. I will go in front of the products on the supermarket. I will just get the cheapest one and okay, that's it, yeah? yeah. So that's my, my, my final comment. Very, very nice. We've, we've come to the end of our time. 
Uh, so I, I thank you very much, Lucas, Shane, Sukhdev, fantastic insights. Thank you for joining. I think we could have talked at least for another half hour here, but uh, our time is up. But thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Uh, one, one last comment. I think uh, one point which I would like to say is I think our effective storytelling and I think uh, integration of technology will bring in a lot of difference. And I think we need to put our yellow thinking hat and bring our little experiments to life to take this forward. Yeah, I think that makes sure. perfect sense. Really For strong sure. messages. Love that. Great way to finish the first day. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Sukhdev, Shane and Lucas. We have come to the end of the innovative uh, focus of the Connected Packaging Summit today. Tomorrow, we'll be focusing on another trend within connected packaging, which is sustainability. And of course, all our panelists today have touched a little bit on that. It's a really big theme. It's not going anywhere either. So how are you going to communicate? How connected packaging help communicate your goals uh, or your packaging or your sustainability uh, credentials? So please join us uh, tomorrow, same place. Uh, don't go anywhere tomorrow. That is going to be hearing the best things from Griner Packaging, Transcend Packaging, Ghost Straw, AB and Bev, Ello Pack, and Garcia Carrion. So it's going to be a great day tomorrow. Thanks to everybody and the fantastic audience for today. And see you all again tomorrow.